Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this session, we're just going to do an overview on vector object fills, and then we're going to go into more in depth sessions on these fill types. Now there's a couple of different fill types that you can apply to your vector objects. One is of course no fill at all and if you come down to the status bar you'll see that there's no fill there and that's represented by the X and then we have the outline color over here and its size. Next to that we have a uniform or a solid color fill that could also be a Pantone color with a tint. Then we have a fountain fill, and we can see that down here. And then we have the bitmap pattern fill. Now, I prefer to work with the interactive fill tool when I'm filling objects, or if I'm working with uniform colors, I'll work with the color palette a lot. Zoom out here, and we can see a design here. Got a couple of different fills in here. There is a Stan Williams text and that has a gradient fill. The fill here, even though it has a gradient on top with some transparency, we'll hold down Alt, that's a bitmap fill that's actually a seamless flames. And that came from our Fashion Factory, which really has 2,500 seamless bitmap fills and or textures for Corel Draw. I like to have these right at my fingertips when I'm designing in Corel Draw, so that's why set up all of these different bitmap fills and textures. Beneath that, this object is a gradient. And over here we have a uniform fill with the yellow and then the orange next to it to give it like a shaded look in the stars. So we're using all of these different fills together in this racing design. We've got the gradient, the bitmap fills, the uniform fills, and the gradient fills. Now we can get to our fill tools and options. I'll select this object, I'll go to the object properties and I can go here to the pen tool and here I've got fill. Or if I'm not in scroll mode, I can open the scroll and down here I'll have the fill and I could work with the fill color from here just with a left click and that'll change the color. I can go to the color palettes from here also in the object properties docker. Now for the gradient fill, I would go to the interactive fill tool by default, even though it's here. Working with it interactively is a little bit easier and you're able to dial things in a little bit better than working from the object properties docker. I can also go to the edit fill dialog box by double clicking down here in the status bar next to the fill and that'll bring that up and I'll have the same type of tools that I have here in the object properties docker. So that's how we can set those up. Now if I'm looking at these I can go to my objects and start to work with them. I'll go to the interactive fill tool which I already have and I'll go to the bitmap pattern fill which is right there, but I don't need to do that. I'm going to bring my Fashion Factory back up and I'm going to go here to this and let's see what we got here. I don't want that. I'm going to hold down Alt and select the object beneath that. I'm going to give that a seamless pattern fire fill and I think I'll go with, let's say this here and I'll select Apply Texture as Bitmap Fill That'll fill that. Minimize this. Now I can go to the interactive fill tool. And I've got a preview of that here in the status bar, also in the object properties bar. But here's where it gets interesting. I go to the interactive fill tool. 
This square that you see represents the actual bitmap that is the fill. And I can left click, hold down, rotate, and make adjustments to that. Now here I can zoom in, just a little bit of a different flames look there, but I can select these objects holding down shift and just give them a uniform fill by coming over here to the orange as you can see there. Now where I want to do a gradient fill, I come up here to the text, I'll left click on that to select it then just left click and pull. Now I'm going to be going from white to white here. So what I'm going to want to do is take this and make this, let's say a yellow for now. So I'll come here into the review or show color viewers, make that yellow, come over here, select okay, you can see that. now. Very often, if there was a gradient fill already applied to an object, it'll just fill that right back in. And this had that before. And then we'll just take this rotation arm and just pull it out so that we're in line with the text. Let's do the same thing down here. I'll select this text, left click, and pull that up like that. I'm going to pull this arm this way to make sure it's lining up correctly with that and then I'm going to change this fill color to let's say a yellow so I'll come here left click there then left click hold down come here to the corner release that that's now a yellow I'll come up here to the top color node and then I'll click on that come here and we'll change that to a red actually just come all the way down here and that will change to a red I'll close this and then I can zoom in, left click, hold down on the color node and reposition that. Bring that in so there's more red down here and bring the yellow down more to the bottom. So you can see how all of this is working. Now here I've got another fill here that's going to be filled with let's say a yellow and I'll just left click to fill that. And you can see how all of that works. Now in our next sessions we'll go through these fill types in greater detail, but we'll wrap here and continue in our next session.